Boom. So that means McLeod and Milo are on stream next. All right, we're, good. we're just going to run McLeod Milo on stream next. Catherine and Black Shadow are locked in a duel of fates off stream right now. It looks like they've gone to game three, perhaps. But Milo returning, rising from the ashes. Bundan, thank you for the raid with nine people coming through. What's up, guys? Spam your Bundan. This is melee emotes. We want to see some orb fans in here. Yeah, My Milo Incognito. Thank you for following Bundan. Thank you for the support, brother. Supporting some offline melee. This is melee, guys. Yes. Uh, you don't have to do it at this screen, guys. Just go to the go to the stage select. Press X. Wait, did they do it? Yes, yes, yes. Guys, is this melee? I'm not sure. Someone will have to confirm these claims. Alright, but it looks like we're actually getting into it straight away. No, it's not. I think they're starting? Yes, they are. Boom, Milo versus McLeod in loser's quarters, no less. In Hobo Can of all places. Now the, the man, the myth, the legend, Milo is playing Marth these days, and up against McLeod, who has been playing for quite some time, and especially in this matchup, he might have his work cut out for himself today. But not to worry, I believe in Milo. I believe he's got what it takes to to clutch. But you just got to not get scared of the McLeod when he starts power shielding you and doing a lot of pressure. That is right, Reno's. Nick is here. He's here to play. Alright, Milo just content with a grab into forward throw and nothing and not much else. There we go. He's looking for a pivot S match, I think, off the F throw. I don't know. Seems a bit hard to go for. But I I trust him. I believe in the process. Just trust the process, guys, okay? Just trust the process. He's swinging. He really is just swinging now. Yeah. Welcome, Musket, to the stream. Hello, hello. Hot, hot off a of 3 0 versus McLeod. What do you think about him, McLeod uh, and his gameplay today? I see. I don't know. I was shocked. I was playing with friendlies. Um, so him and uh, him, Caleb, uh, Liam, and a couple of who were like hanging out at the mine like night before, mm -hmm. like sleeping over and um, like with Yep. You good? Yep. And uh, he's gone a lot better. Like he was gone a lot better in friendly. Though. I was like, oh damn. He was taking like definitely taking more than um, taking more than uh, I was taking playing very solid. I don't oh know. damn. That's crazy, actually. See, like I don't know how much of that was just like. Like, my set with him now is him playing off and how much of that was, like, me playing a bit more solid than, like, saying just general friendlies, but, like, um... There's definitely, definitely some moments, especially on the FD, where he was just, like, dropping chain grabs and... Yeah, like, I was commenting on that and saying, like, we hadn't got a single, like, complete spacey chain grab on FD twice. No, yeah, it's... And, like... His SDI as well. Who's SDIing a bit, but like nowadays with McLeod, it's like his SDI and upper up is just, it's so hard to actually get. When he's like, True. when his SDI is on point, it's so hard to get the confirm, which is so rough because it means he can just like. And I think that's the thing, Peach can DI behind anyway to get out. So right, it's just, yeah. It's so hard to actually um, get anything off a grab okay. on Peach, but I was getting a lot off grabs, like a lot of like, both racking up percent and um, skill confirm, so. Let's think about playing against McLeod. If he, um, I'm very happy to not have to be in losers because you know nowadays going into losers, it's like it's hard. There's always like at least one or two other people that are, like really solid on your level. That's just you know what I mean. It's, There's literally f six people in the bracket that can win the tournament today. Mm. You know, and it's like um, six is generous. But yeah, yeah it's a little generous. Six is but, like, generous, but you know, I would say realistically, um, I would put money on. I'd be, you know, four. Yeah, yeah. I'd say four is the, like, 
the actual contender count. The actual, yeah. There's four people that could win. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You guys, you played... Um, yeah, guys, like, how many, How long have we been playing tournaments for? If you yeah, play best of five and winners, you play best of five and losers. Yep, yep. It's, that, it's that simple. It is that simple, lads. God, the old days of... um. I swear that was at one point we ran something where it was like uh, you go from playing a but yeah in the old days I guess when you went from playing best of fives in no never mind I'm done. So the only time that would happen is um mm, not even then no. even then you wouldn't really do it like the only time that there would be like a modified rule set for it would be if we ran best of five for top three plus loser semis. Yeah. That's the only time we would have a modified format for it, but like, we've not been doing that ever. No. And since having um, cheese leagues, we've been able to run best of five from top six. Yeah. So. Oh, no. Yeah, I like this way. Like, having winner semis, like player best of five is always really nice. Yeah, yeah. Because you're in top six, right? But like, um, some people like to do best of five for Lucy Sammy seeing as it is technically top four and it is technically money on the line. That's yeah. That's why if you run um top three best of five but not loser semis best of five, it, some people don't like it. Because mm. it's like there's still money on the line, but you know. But we don't do that shit here. We just run top six. We have the time. Yeah exactly. Well like we're bla like obviously it's nice having a much you know it's nice having a large number of entrants but like you can't really afford as much time for the tournament if you have, say, 30 plus people and you still have to finish it within like four hours. So, yeah. you know, it's one of the like benefits of having a smaller tournament, but give it a bit more time. Yeah, McLeod just kind of. I don't know, it seems like he is in control of the most stage, but only because Milo's running, actively kind of running away from him. He. That's you the, see what I mean? He has a very defensive game plan. Milo. Like Milo yeah, it's yeah. weird, because his puff used to be like a decent bit more aggressive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was, yeah. I remember that. I remember those days. The thing is like smart defense is fine, but if you just like if you're in a position where you have stage and you can hold it and you're just like giving it up anyway just because you're like kinda spooked or because it's just like the easy because like that's the thing. It's like I'm playing neutral and yeah. it was like what you're actually doing is losing neutral. You're never gonna immediately get hit out by something if you're like say half a you know or a third of a um, stage lumps away and you dash back. You're not yeah. gonna like immediately feel the repercussions. But then suddenly you're in like the corner, they're in center, and you go for a panic option because of that and you know then you get hit out of it. But like that panic option was because of like dashing back previously, right? Mm. Like giving up stage when you didn't have to. Like Miley's got 30% combos, yeah. which is like unfortunately against McLeod, not really like enough to you know eke out a lead if you're just gonna commit to playing this much neutral. Yeah, because he hits like a truck, even against like something like Moth. So you either have to continually win neutral over and over again, and I feel like right now McLeod's definitely figured out this matchup more than uh, Milo has. Oh no! Also, playing too defensive against Peach is going to give an excuse to pull turnips. Yeah. And if your game plan against, if you don't have a prop, like an idea of game plan against turnip, if your like game plan against turnip is just like hold shield and pray or like jump, then like. Ash commenting in chat. He's been uh, Milo's been hit by every single turnip. It's. it's just, oh, he just dodged one. Uh, he just dodged. He's, he's fine. He's, he's, fine. Like, he's on the board. Well, no, like, hope, well, here's the thing. Like, unless you're playing McLeod on your play all the time, you're not gonna have that match of experience. That's the thing as well. Like, we can't be. It's like, a. Who's playing Peach in Australia? Who's... Right now? Right who's now? playing Peach? Just McLeod and Catherine. Yep. Cause Quetz is out of the picture mostly. He doesn't really play as much anymore. There's a, there's a few sneaky Peaches out there on the come up, or like you know, that have existed, but it's hard. They're like so few and far between. It's like. Whereas if you're in Adelaide, you would have played Peaches your whole life. Mm. <laughs> if you played just offline here in Adelaide, you would have been playing Peaches your whole the life. The Peach State, you know. Man, I got, I gotta say, um, it definitely is a, a symptom of a scene that values the time spent together more than the actual games. When every single person who entered the tournament is not playing friendlies right now, we yeah. are all literally watching <laughs> the game on screen. We just want to sit back and just, you know, watch it. that's good, actually. Literally, I'm everyone just wants to watch the melee, which is, like, nice to it, catch up with everyone. Mm. 
I think um, sometimes you can like get wrapped up in just trying to spam friendlies and like then you don't get to talk to people as much. I think as well oh, Slippy. Nice. I think Slippy helps that as well. Yeah, true. Because everyone here knows that like if they want to, they can still grind when they get back. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. It's not like CRT, but it's still quite a. It's still very very useful. Mm. So you can focus more on the social aspect of like yeah. a local. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we're talking about this. Like, you know, Milo is. He's even it. He's he sort of. He's at least getting some stocks here and there. Mm. He's just kind of missing some key grabs in the match. And also not L cancelling his down out. You don't wanna you don't wanna miss that. And so Milo's been like trying to work on his um pivots. Like mm -hmm. sp specifically um pivot F smash. Mm -hmm. So like he's been going for like forward throw pivot F smash. Like trying to grind it out, and he's been messing up a lot. And the problem is, it's still not like true on Peach, right? No, nah, it's sure, a mix like, up. It's like, yeah. So it's like. I mean, Nick would be able to help us here, but he's not on the mic. Unfortunately, Nick doesn't um, like commentary with uh, mask on because it's like muffles, muffles his voice too much. And his, I guess so. Which is like, but it acts as a free pop filter for the for the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. He could have just F smashed him raw there. Oh, he's spacing. He's spacing his sword. Milo's playing the game. Look at this stock. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, could you imagine? That would have been so. <laughs> I think he didn't put enough thought power into hitting that. Oh, oh, I wanted an edge cancel. Oh, oh that it? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's literally it, All right. ladies that's and gentlemen. True. We've got up next, we have um, you and Black Shadow. Oh, Black Shadow one? Well yes. done. Okay, here we are. All right. 